Williamson is ten times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Lucan certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable. GP10, race one. Bob Stolper, Latvia. Into the closing seconds. And watch the bikes on the far right of your screen. That's where the red plate of Etienne Bax is. Now, if he gets out of the gate like he did yesterday, he'll get a fly. If he gets it wrong, he's going to have to work for a living. The gate goes down, and away they go. Jump, Rodionov got a jumping start over that. And look at that, it's the whole shot kids, Arne Jerkins and Robbie Bax again that streak into the lead ahead of Kuhn Hermans and Nicola Mousset. Mousset then doing a uh, Julian Veldman in third, pushing someone wide. So number five crew of Julian Veldman and Glenn Janssens and Etienne Bax. Uh, Steve is pointing at the screen, looked like about seventh place. Oh, that was almost Kush's upside down. They landed very, very awkwardly. Trying to pick out Etienne Pack. There he is, Ray's about 10th. He's right in the thick of the bunch. He did not. And that's what we said, Steve. If you don't score from that inside line, you are stuffed. You are stuffed. And you have to work very hard to get around here, as we saw yesterday. The uh, left to left is fairly difficult, but uh, right to left is also as difficult. You have to really plan your, uh, your moves down to the millimetre. So it is Arne Deerkins with the whole shot. There is a whole spot, whole shot sponsor this weekend from Brower's Zinc from Maastricht in Holland. So he's earned a few. So we thank you, sir. Yeah, indeed we do. Any, any contributions gratefully received. What we need is a commentator sponsor. Arne Deerkins then. He and Robbie Bax out in front. So the young guns, the young guns are out in front, going really, really well. Coppolati just going through your screen there. Zeno Coppolati number 18, another good start for him, fourth place. So Coppolati is in fourth. Julian Feldman in third. When we come round first time, we'll get the captions, but there's a lot of fighting going on. That's Jake Brown. Jake Brown right there behind Marvin Van Lucan and Ben Van den Bogart. So Jake Brown, Van Lucan are then in fifth place. Bax just ran the outside of him there. So Bax has moved up another spot as well. As oh. They go through the strike for the first time. Arne Jerkins then. He and Robbie Bax looking good. Pulling out a bit of a gap now, the first two, over the chasing Julian Feldman. It's so, so hot. This is a 30 minute plus two lap race. Kurt Hermans on the inside. Hermans then trying to get the drive. He looked at the inside. He said in his interview pre race that he thought he could have the beating of Arne Dierkins. Well, time will tell. And he's certainly got to do that because he's only got a five point cushion over the race leader in the championship standing, Steve. Yet yeah, it's close, it's early doors, but the progress of Etienne Bax is going to be pivotal, pivotal to what happens here. It certainly is, and if Bax uh, doesn't make the ground as quick as he would like, these leaders will disappear. Oh, Velton makes a mistake there. Velton made a mistake, and Arne Jerkins is slow in the turns. Kuhn Hermans has got more speed, and he's climbing all over the back now of the youngster Dierkins, well they're all youngsters, the top three, top four indeed, are all youngsters, all in their low twenties, very, very low twenties. Dierkins, Hermans, Feldman, Van Luken, Compalati, Marvin Van Luken and Ben van der Bogart then in fourth, having gone past the Italian who always starts strongly and made no exception here in race one and still, still Kuhn Hermans looking at that inside line. Now we've got the, oh there's an injury, now who's that down Wilkinson. Is that Brett Wilkinson? That's Wilkinson. Oh my goodness me. I just saw that out of the corner of my eye there and I was waiting for it to come up on the screen. I'm pretty sure it is Wilkinson, we will find out for you and let you know as we go back then to the leaders. Fifth place, Van Lucan, uh, Coppolati, uh, back six now. Etienne Bax, Kasper Supinis up to six with Brown and Millard, Jake Brown, Kush, eighth, 
Rodionov, yeah. Stuart Brown, way, way, way down the order. What's going on? There's that line again that Kuhn Hermans has a look at. A look over the shoulder from Nicola Mousset, just to see where the chasing bunch is. These top four, nothing between them. Yeah. Marvin van Lukener knows full well that he needs to gain points over Etienne Banks. He certainly does. And uh, so the longer these boys are out in front, Compilati is holding backs up a little. So a little bit of breathing space for this front quad, if you like. Again, Herman's looking to go down the inside. Wasn't quite able to get the power down. Bax is passed. Bax is past Compilati. I saw Bax go fifth. Look at this at the front, Dierkins and Robbie Bax and Hermans and Busset right in their wheel tracks. Veldman now coming under real pressure from Marvin van Luke and Beth van der Berger. Uh, George Kidd's there in 15th. Where is Kurt Varick? I'd expect Varick to be running strong as well. Bax still behind. He's not Bax, he's in front now of Compilati, as I said. I saw him go past. Compilati in six. Bax and Kasper Stupelis, who's had something of a hero's reception here in Latvia, uh, rightly so. He's a he's a legend in his own lifetime here, Kasper Stupelis, in his native country. Multiple world champion passenger with different drivers. Yes, yeah. Took his uh, first title, I think, with uh, Daniel Williamson. Uh, and has got three three titles to his uh, to his name at the moment. So, still back with the leaders as they come through to this big tabletop to the far side of the circuit. Deakins then settling down in front. Hermes tries to find that inside line. There's no way through because he'll get the front taken away. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupel is riding their socks off here. Right on the back. So now we have a 15-wheeler. Look at that. How close do you want it? You could get them all in the back of the Arctic, I reckon. They're so close. Dierkins, Hermans, Feldman still holding on well with the mega engine, the only mega two-stroke here this weekend. So again, Dierkins goes to the inside to shut the door, gets the drive out of the corner as they go away to this little table top into the middle of the circuit. Well, he's obviously doing lower lap speeds because he's he's holding up the freight train. There's no doubt, no doubt about it. Quickest lap there was from Van Lukener. Marvin Van Lukener set the fastest time, but there's a limit to how much he can gain from that because of the traffic in front. But Marvin, Marvin Van Lukener, Ben Van der Bogart, really, really looking good here. Compilati holding six ahead of Jake Brown and Joe Millard. Rodionov still eighth uh, behind Brown. Then Santamans, then Koivan, then Christoph Kuch, then Fox. The Czech guys, Kurt Parrick is in 13th. Stuart Brown behind George Kidd and Lewis Gray in 16th place. There, Brett Wilkinson feeling very second hand walking away. That will have aggravated the old injuries, I suspect. He'll, uh, he'll have taken a nasty day. Yeah, it didn't, look, it didn't look nice. But uh, it's good to see him up on his feet. That's the main thing that we like to see. So, again, back to the leaders. Dierkins has managed to open up a little bit of a gap between him and Hermans. We did see this yesterday. And he's also filled Hermans in, but look at Hermans now on that inside. There's an opportunity there if he can just get the power on a little bit quicker. As we saw yesterday, Dierkins was slightly quicker in places. And uh, Marvin tried everything in his race book to try and get past yesterday. Well, Max Stupelis are finding it difficult now because they are in fifth place and this has become a one-line track. You can see how it's digging out. Kurt Hermans, though, is absolutely getting so frustrated and he's getting filled in where there's been water put on, so a lot of muck on his goggles and all down the front of him. Arne Diokins, having been out in front for the entire race, is the only clean one. And they're still looking pristine in actual fact. But Marvin van Luken now knows that he's got the red plate of Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis right behind him in fifth. And they'll be closing him down and pushing. And I'm waiting now for some miraculous feat from Etienne Bax because I would say sitting here, 
with 20 minutes still remaining, it's almost impossible to overtake anyone here. You've got to be very brave. You've got to be literally on his back wheel coming into one of these bends, possibly this turn here. You really, oh, he tried to get it through. He got it beached there, too tight into the turn. Well, he's got to try something, Steve. Yeah. You know, he's got to give it a go, but he's got this cushion at the top of the standing, so Etienne Bax is sitting clear at the moment with a 43-point lead over Marvin Van Lukena. And whilst that will erode a fraction, it won't matter a row of beats if Van Lukener beats him in this race. But it's a 43-point lead Etienne Bax and Kasper Stuplis have coming into this race one of GP10 in Stolper. There's Hermans on the inside again. Can he make it stick this time? Time and time again. But he leaves himself vulnerable. He, he, he's always at walking pace going around there. And Julian Veldman senses if he drives and gets the power on, he can go around the outside. If he, if he can make that line around the outside work, you know, Marvin normally is a very good one for picking these uh, obscure lines, if you like, to uh, try and make something happen. But all the while, this freight train that we have on screen, Bax, I think, has to be slightly patient try not to rush things the last thing you want to do is make a mistake well I can see Van Lukener going third shortly he's right on the back of Julian Veldman in fact he's trying everything he knows but he also knows that if he takes a risk that Bax is going to be at the inside like a rat of a drain pipe and there will be no no way to stop him Etienne Bax just following on now he's content to play his race craft and follow on where this track is such a short track as well we will start coming into back markers i would think within the next couple of laps perhaps so that could play a vital part i think it almost certainly will i think there's no doubt about it we've got a couple in view already such is the pace of these guys and they won't dare i say the tail enders that some of the tail enders we've got here in stelper won't be used to World Championship pace and they won't be expecting the leaders. Although we've got the blue flags waving. Oh, he's moved over. He's done a proper job. Well, actually, that is the that's lady. the young lady. That's yeah. Katrine Poldmar. Yeah. Katrine Poldmar doing the right thing and getting out of the way. But, you know, the way things are going, she's going to pick up championship points here in this race of attrition. Again, Herman tries that inside line. but can't make it work. Back tries it also just not enough of a rut there to get that back wheel into to get it to drive out. where we'd see the advantage here if we had a left-hand chair in this mix because they but jake brown is not close enough jake brown is still behind compilati in seventh place uh, just one second behind him so jake brown then is moving up on the italian compilati but this battle at the front is just too riveting to leave it's fascinating stuff Arne Jerkins, Robbie Bax lead from Kern Hermans Nicolou Musée. Then it's Julian Veldman and Glenn Janssens from Marvin van Rukener and Ben van den Bogart. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis bringing up the rear in these, this 15-wheel freight train of activity. I've got to have a lie down, Steve. That is just absolutely incredible. Fantastic race. We hope you're enjoying it at home. Again, you see there working hard in the chair, Casper's also working hard, Etienne, as they come over this set of jumps in the middle, and it looks as though Bax is going to try and come down the inside, has to back out, He's trying to get that inside line to work for him. Well, I'll tell you what, this is Grand Prix Psycho Racing at its very best. Here's Jakey Brown now with Compilati, and Jake Brown goes through. So there, the right-hand chair of Jake Brown and Joe Millard. That was a replay, that's what happened. So we've now got Jake Brown up to fifth place, sixth place, I beg your pardon, sixth place, but a good way down behind. So he is some, um, oh, up team seconds. I'll tell you in a minute when I see it on the screen. Yeah, he is 13 seconds behind Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis. Meanwhile, this five-way scrap at the front, you just can't take your eyes off it. Watch Marvin van Lukena. I said we'd see him go third, and I reckon we will, because he's getting the hurry up from Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis, who are right there just waiting for him 
to put a foot wrong. Is he going to put a foot wrong? Well, the last thing he wants is Etienne Bax to extend that championship lead even further because with nine races remaining after this one, the opportunity to claw back those points is vanishing. Yep, yep. And you uh, can't afford to let these boys get away. And again, I think Valman is just slightly holding this he pair up. There, 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 goes, goes. there goes Van Luken, Van Luken alongside on the jump. No, didn't make it stick. He moved out of the wheel tracks of Julian Veldman and Ben van der Berg aren't there getting a kick up the backside from the real wheel. The, uh, as we saw there, Ben got a slight little kick from the rear wheel. Some of these uh, ruts and holes on this circuit are all becoming square edged. Those that ride will know what I mean. Those that don't, basically the, uh, where the sand is fairly hard, you get a very hard edge and these wheels just will hit that and just kick you. Yeah, they cover it and grade it with a tractor between times, but uh, there you go. I'll tell you what as well, look at, just looking at that screen, I watched the uh, times go through. Jake's mm. coming, Jake Brown is starting to pick this, the pace up and start to come to this. Well, he was going well in qualifying, so, you know, absolutely brilliant ride. Herman's there just half a second, when it's visible, you can see Kuhn Herman's Nicola Musse pass another tail ender there. And still looking for that inside line and really, really trying on a Jerkins. He's got all Bax. Bax has really, really got it wrong there. The number 51 crew. Yes, they're tail enders, but uh, that was Argo Pulsar and Russian Talf, the Estonian pairing. Tail enders being lapped by Bax, but they did not get in his way. But what that did was drag Etienne Bax further off. Marvin Van Luken and he's opened up a big gap now. He's got all that work to do again to get back in touch. The trouble is as well, he's just getting to be a little bit impatient. You need to relax and you need to concentrate. I know you've got to try and uh, move yourself forward, but you know you have to bide your time and just take the opportunity when it arrives. E easier said than done. It is, certainly. We, we know that. Certainly, it certainly is. I know when you uh, have your helmet and goggles on, it's uh, oh, got black marker stuck in the line. That's I thought it was number 26, but it's not Marcus Norbeck because he's not riding. He said so. No. So uh, tail ender there, out of the running. Looking for the Koosh boys as well. Uh, Varick now up to eighth ahead of Christoph Sandovitz. What do you want? Still holding on. Justin Coyman in 11th. Brown. Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain in 12th place and struggling. Kush is in 14th, but still Arne Jurkins and Robbie Bax, and he's getting the hurry up board. Kern Hermans is breathing down your neck. You'll be able to hear that Zarbel screaming away or bellowing away behind him, won't he? Yeah, you can certainly hear these, uh, these machines coming, but you have just got to concentrate on your job in hand. Again, Herman's coming wide, trying to scare, square him up. Yeah, he's trying all which, which way there. And uh, you see back to back on the back of uh, Marvin Van Luken. Yeah, Bax has got the speed, hasn't he? He certainly has got the speed we saw yesterday. He was just so quick in his qualifying race yesterday. If he'd got the start, he'd been away. Yeah. But he yeah. hasn't, and that's what makes sidecar motocross so fascinating. It's a gamble. You have a qualifying race to choose your grid position, you, you live or die, for want of a better word. Stand or fall, I think, is a better choice of words. Yeah, Bax, let's go Bax is through. Bax comes down the inside. Marvin left the door open over that little jump there. So, Etienne Bax then, Kasper Stupel is up to fourth place. Now, can they do anything about Julian Velman and Glenn Janssens? All will be revealed. Uh, 11 minutes, just over 11 minutes of this race to go. 11 minutes plus two laps. No Daniel Willemsen, no Davy Sanders, no Gert van Verven. And I wonder if Valentin Giro is watching this on the live feed from his hospital bed or wherever his rehabilitation is taking place because there is no one who'd like to be out there more than the flamboyant Frenchman. But we'll see you soon, Valentin. Look at this scrap there. Marvin Van Luken and Ben van der Bogart 
being dropped away a little bit. I think Banks going through took the wind out of their sails. Yeah, whether the whether Marvin just made a slight mistake over the back end of the circuit there and allowed kept the door open and allowed uh, Banks to come through. So Banks now putting Velton under pressure and she just looks as though he tried to dive the inside. Velton, ten, 10 plus 2. Velton shut the door uh, firmly in his face. You saw the the Banks pick through there with uh, not ship to shore radio. They've got walkie-talkies from spotters around the course telling them what's happening further ahead. So organised and professional is Etienne Bax about the way he goes racing. And he now is right on the back wheel of Julian Veldman and Glenn Janssen's. The battle at the front still alive between Anna Jerkins and Kuhn Hermans and their respective passengers. Robbie Bax and Nicola Musset. Both, it's interesting, Steve, both those passengers, older in years, vastly experienced, and how much have they helped those youngsters? They've cer <laughs> certainly, it's been an absolutely amazing. Yeah. Bobby Bax moving across to Arne Deacons this year has really helped Arne. And uh, Arne has got the bit between his teeth and really wants, uh, wants to put up a good fight. And uh, also, Nicholas Mousset, with the young Kuhn Hermans, the sand expert, if you like, has uh, really helped with them. And Hermans then jumps down the outside. Let's have a look. Is it going to be there? It's over these jumps now. Arna Jerkins has got to keep the power on. He's got to be brave here. But round the right-hand side, Kuhn Hermans and Nicola Mousset made a bid for the lead. They know Etienne Bax is coming, and there's a stranded outfit on the inside line so everybody had to go wide there uh, Marvin van Luken uh, closing up again just a little bit and you can see there from that uh, outfit that was just stricken in there how deep these ruts are uh, starting to get so now back then up into third place is going after the leading pair Marvin looking at the inside line going in really fast there Kuhn Hermans also must be getting a little bit frustrated here. He said in his interview he thought he'd got the beating, beatings of Arne Jerkins. Well, he's certainly rubbing his front panel on the back of the rear wheel of Arne Jerkins, who is definitely putting in slower laps and holding the number two in the world up at the moment. But maybe this is Arne Jerkins' tactics. You do not know. Etienne Bax in third now and coming. So he'll be watching this battle with these two kids in front of him, wondering, has he got an answer for it? Well, he's right close now. It is such a close race. And by definition, this track, Steve, was bound to close everyone up. Yes. With the jumps, the nature of the ruts, the nature of the bends, yep. it was never going to be anything but close. No, no, that's right. And of course, we've had quads here with us today as well. And of course, they tend to push the, a lot of the stuff across to the outside and make the track fairly narrow. So you don't want to go off your main line. As soon as you go off your main line and dive it in a bit deep, the sand here will drag you in. Well, somebody's going to have to make a gamble. They're going to have to do something uh, and take a bit of a risk to try. And that man might just be Etienne Bax because he's going to get frustrated sitting behind these two. And they're all going to the utmost of their capability. We've got seven minutes of racing plus two laps to do. And the $65 million question is, can Arne Jerkins hold this pace and keep this quartet behind him to the flag? And there's a big question mark over that. That's a very big question mark. You know, can he just hold his pace? Does he try and back the pace off a little bit, get, grab a little bit of a breather and then spurt for the last few laps? Or do you just go completely, uh, completely to the to the wall and just keep going as fast as you can? Yeah, I wonder what you were going to say there for a minute. I almost, but uh, we're, we're we're live on air, so I'll behave myself. Arne <laughs> Diokins and Kuhn Hermans, right with him. Etienne Bax then. See Hermans there was okay. just trying to move that berm out a little to make a line around the outside, but that's, and that's a gamble. Yeah. You get pulled in, and they, they just, there's just nowhere to go. And Etienne Bax is looking for alternatives. It's very, very difficult here. Arna Jenkins has pulled out a bit of a gap now. And Etienne Bax has suddenly found himself closing on Kuhn Hermans. And this could be interesting. Hermans now has got to ride defensively as well. 
he's thinking about passing the man in front, but he's also got to walk, and there, look over the shoulder. So he's now thinking, whoa, 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 I've got company, and we know who it is, because his pit bull will be telling him that. What the dickens do I do? Do I keep pressing on and try and get past the man in front? That is the obvious solution, isn't it? It certainly is. But again, uh, the heart rates will be up high, the breathing will be uh, very deep. These boys have been out there for over 25 minutes already. Stuart Brown now up to eighth place. So that's a reasonably uh, good ride from a bad start. Well, it's, uh, yeah, not easy coming through. He's behind Coppolati. Uh, Jake Brown and Joe Mellard in sixth, ahead of Kurt Farrick. Then it's Coppolati, and then it's Stuart Brown. As I said at the start of the race, there is an opportunity here for the likes of Brown and Koiban, all those guys further down the order, excuse me, to uh, capitalise with the absence of some of like Verbe, Giro and Willemsen. So those places in the championship are coming up for grabs. What have we got then? Still Dierkins and Robbie Bax, still Hermans and still Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis in third. Does Bax now just sit there for the last four minutes and two laps, just watch this pair, fight it out, and then pick up the pieces? Yeah, he, well, he, he doesn't have to break a leg here because he knows he's in front of Van Lucan, uh, his main threat in the championship. So all he, he will do, and speaking to him uh, after Strauss Besselbach, he told one of the guys that if he could increase his points lead round by round, that's yeah. good enough time. Yeah, you don't really need you to, have to win every race. You don't have to win every race. We go back to the solos many, many years ago. Josh Coppins, the solo rider of the Kiwi, did not win. A, I think he won one race. Uh, became became a uh, world champion. Yeah, became, yeah. So it's, it's about consistency. It certainly is. And uh, nobody's more consistent in getting out of the gate than Arnold Jerkins. You know, we almost don't have to spot the whole shot anymore. It's, uh, it's a given. Uh, Arne Jürgens and Robbie Banks, and maybe that uh, sponsor that you mentioned there, uh, name them again, Steve, I can't remember the name. It's uh, Brower's Zinc from Maastricht. Maastricht. Oh, yeah. I'm just looking, and I know it's only decoration, but the cycle wheel of uh, Arne Jürgens, uh, the cycle wheel cover is running wildly eccentric. Uh, I don't think that will be a problem. It might. It might come adrift, but it's certainly come loose. It's all over the place, the cycle wheel cover. But that won't bother them. Not in this sort of rough going. They won't notice any eccentricity. Van Luken has stopped. Marvin Leuven, Ben van der Bogart have a front brake problem by the look of it. They've got... So they've got caught up in the green fence. It looks like they've got caught up in the green fence. There's some stuff up in that front wheel. Jake Brown went through. So Jake Brown and... Joe Millard have gone through into fifth place ahead of Van Luken. Here comes Kurt Varick and Laris Diders. Number seven, Varick and Diders, and Stuart Brown as well will not be far behind. Arna Jerkin still fending off that relentless pressure from Kuhn Hermans and Nicola Mousset. Wow, what a psycho race we've got here. This is non stop action all the way. And it's been very clean from all these boys. It certainly has. They, uh, the temptation to dive in is there, but they you know. have behaved themselves, which is very nice to see. We very rarely see uh, too much bumping and boring, but as we both know, rubbing is racing, they say. Yep. And it's always, unfortunately, the passenger that takes the brunt of it. I hear Bax and Casper Stupel is now right there on the back. Sorry, Steve, I cut across you. Didn't have to do that. No worries. Uh, I'll give you a kick next time. <laughs> Closing on the back, it looks like Dierkins and Robbie Bax have got second wind here. Their pit signals will be saying two laps, and we've both done this sport. We know that when you get into that two-lap zone, something happens to your brain. It tells you you can do it. You've come so far, we can do the two laps. Yeah. And, you know, and when you get the last lap flag, you talk yourself around. Whatever the pain, whatever the misery, but Arna Jerkins now has pulled the pit. He's done something here. He's eased away. There's a tail end of the blue flag being waved. Will it be a problem? Let's have a look. Did Van Luken hit the green fence? Where did he collect it? I think he must have picked it up, up on the start, uh, on that big uh, sweeping right-hander at the top end of the circuit there. He must have picked it up. 
obviously went in a little bit too deep. Counting down to the two minute board here. Now, interestingly enough, if the positions stay the way they are, he will claw back three points. So he will be within two points of third place and Kuhn Hermans. Hermans knows that. Yep. He knows that five margin will evaporate yep. to two. Yep. Is he going to do anything? He's going to try, surely. Pass it. What is Nicholas doing there? Yeah, we say put his hand up and wave. What was that all about? Not sure. Now, is he... Are they going to let backs pass? No. No, they won't be. Because they need... They need the points on Arne Jokic. But it's too... It's too early to showboat. Yeah. Nicola Mousset was waving his arm, but... Yeah. I did, did see him a couple of previous laps, and I wasn't quite sure what I saw. But he, he was... For, definitely for sure gesticulating about something. Well, Etienne hasn't been rubbing them, has he? No, no, he's so it's all not been, been anywhere near. No, it's all been clean. So, Arne Jerkins then. The clock has reached a row of zeros, which tells us we are in to two laps next time round. Yeah, that uh, wheel, cycle wheel thing is becoming decidedly eccentric. It's making me dizzy. It's like one of those bicycles at the fun fair with the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with the wobbly spokes. They're only held on with uh, zip ties anyway. Yep. So, fourth place, Julian Feldman. Fifth place, Jake Brown and Millard Farring. Van Lukener in seventh. Compilati, eighth. Stuart Brown, Josh Chamberlain in ninth. Well, must do better next time, Stuart. You had a wicked, wicked start. No good at all. Race leaders then. Now they've got that psychological advantage. Kelly De Bruyne standing next to us in the commentary box, absolutely despairing with what she's seen. Because she knows that Van Lukener and her boyfriend Ben van den Bogart need the points. They need to close down Etienne Bax and Caspers because their championship Reigning champions, I remind you, Van Luken and Ben van der Bogart is um, drifting away somewhat because this man has been all powerful. The red plate holders, Etienne Bax and Kasper Stubilis this year have been dominant. We're seeing good top class racing as Christoph Sandeman is about to come under the cudgel here, I think. And Kostas Beletskas. It's Kush is actually, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like Kush actually. It looks like Christoph Kush and Brian Anthony. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. So the number 22 crew moving aside to let these race leaders come through. Hermans is not backed out of anything. No, he's not. So it's still putting the young Arne Gierkins under pressure. Well, you know, has Kuhn Hermans been pulling the wool over everyone's eyes? race long and as he saved something for the final lap because we are on the penultimate lap here at Stelper in race one of the 10th round of the WSC the FIM World Cycle Cross Championship in front of a really good crowd now. I'm pleased to see that the people have turned up here in numbers to watch this top class world class Cycle Cross activity we still have a full afternoon's race program coming up. We have the second race for the EMX Quads, the European Quad Championship, which uh, the first race was a gripping affair. And we also have, of course, race two. The Grand Prix in this class in the World Championship to see what can happen. On the final lap then, Arne Dierkins and Robbie Bax ahead of Kuhn Hermans and Nicola Mousset who bravely said they had the beating of the young Belgian. Well, not so this far. And you're leaving it late if you've got a joker in the pack, Kuhn Hermans. But you've ridden well, you've done yourself proud. You've stayed ahead of Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupolis, who in turn have held off Julian Feldman and Glenn Janssens. So the last few corners they go down to the far end of the circuit. Arnie Dirkins there. As we said earlier with the whole shot, the brow was at zinc. Whole shot for the first race. So 
only now got a couple of corners to do. Here they come then. They'll come a long final call then up start finish straight towards us. Arna Jerkins and Robbie Bax on their way to victory here with Kuhn Hummans and Nicola Mousset still giving it their best shot on the run down to the far point of the circuit. That's a long, a lot of jumps, 18 of them. Around the final corner, coming towards our commentary position and the checker flag over the middle jump. And the next one with a flagman on top, victory will go indeed to Arna Jerkins and Robbie Bax from Kuhn Hermans, Nicola Mousset. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis complete the race one podium. Oh dear me. That was uh, an exciting race. Well, there was a lot going on. I mean, it, Julian Veldman was some 15 seconds off the pace and in fourth place ahead of Jake Brown and Joe Millard, who were a further eight seconds back. And then in sixth place, Will it be Varick or will it be Van Luke? Varick. Varick it is. Then Stuart. It's Stuart Brown. Marvin Van Luke and has dropped right out of the reckoning here. Yeah, of course, with that uh, uh, green uh, netting in that front wheel, of course, he won't be able to do a lot of the jumps. Uh, he will struggle to, uh, to get traction. There, the number eight crew of and down at the start champion passenger Kasper Stupelis with the Ava is he worn out or is he fit make your way from seven to three how difficult was it yeah we pushed too hard we pushed hard actually not too hard but it's like you said, it's very difficult to pass and uh, we screw up our start again and uh, we need to come from a little bit middle of the back, back to third position and uh, yeah, so far it was maximum from us. Well, thank you, good luck. Oh, thank you, Yeva. Uh, Kun Hermans, Nicola Mousset. And we can see Yeva in shot there, moving towards the number two runners-up crew. And uh, Kuhn. We're down there. With you made now. your way all the race behind Arne. Was there no opportunity for you, really, or how? What was going on? Uh, no, the track is. Uh, I think it's almost impossible to pass someone because uh, too much jump, and uh, everyone uh, goes at the same speed over the jump, so it's really difficult to pass. But uh, yeah, I feel we were a lot, a lot faster. But uh, yeah, we couldn't pass him, so uh, good job for him, and uh, we will see the second motor. Well, good luck for the next race. Yeah, definitely he was quicker. You could see him Arne. queuing up behind the race leader Arno Jerkins and Robbie Bax. And uh, I'm expecting Yeva to be down there and grab them. Have you got anyone, Yeva? One second. I appreciate it's busy down there. Uh, I hope you're hearing us. We're certainly hearing you okay. Those guys must be exhausted. Well, the crowd easing away uh, while Yeva fights down in the paddock box to get those much needed interviews from the race winners if we possibly can. But the crowd treated to a good one. Okay, she's got him. She's uh, down there with Arne Jerkins and Robbie Bax. Yeva, it's all yours. Thank you, Barry. Arne, congratulations. You did it. You got the whole shot. You won your race. How are you feeling? Yeah, incredible. It was a long way to here. I think the team did a, a great effort. Robbie was amazing. The bike was amazing. Thank to the mechanic, the sponsors. And finally, uh, the whole shot paid off for uh, 25 points. I'm uh, really happy. Did you ever feel that on your side wheel, the thing was moving around differently? <laughs> no, I feel nothing. Um, I focused on the lines. Uh, Robbie was guiding me a little bit. 
So it was really good and uh, at the last uh, five or ten minutes we make a group of three so I was happy because the speed was good but because the fourth uh, dropped and then I uh, just wanted to finish to the end and take the 25 points. Are you ready for the second race? Yeah, no, I'm going me to prepare and then uh, we're going full throttle to the second heat. Well, congratulations and good luck. Yeah, Williamson is ten times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Lucan certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable.